Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in this MCU. Which one, Dan? This is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. These never freaking end. No, they do not. We made a ton of these things. And they all deserved pitch meetings. Yes. Very well. Let's go watch it. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a new Ant-Man movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Oh, boy. We gotta make this good, because this is gonna be the kickoff for Phase 5. Yeah. So it's gotta live up to Phase 4, which a lot of people are saying was the most exciting phase yet. Right. Well, well. So I figure we make this one take place in the quantum realm. That's where small things are. Very small things, sir, and we're gonna have a ton of excitement in this one. Sick. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Tons of helmet removals. Don't you worry about that. There's gonna be a lot. What? Helmet removals, sir. Was this Characters Mandalorian? Are gonna take their helmets off dramatically a shocking number of times. Why? Because that's the coolest thing a person could do. Is it? <laughs> oh yeah, check this out, sir. Oh! <laughs> Whatever. Oh <my> God, <laughs> right? Do that again, do that again, do that again, do that again. <laughs> oh! oh, oh. Alright, this is gonna be a good movie. Anyway, so Scott's daughter Cassie is older now, and she's built this machine that can send a signal down to the quantum realm. Right. But Janet is like, well, you can't be doing that. The quantum realm is dangerous. You can't get to stop doing that. Wasn't she messing around with quantum stuff with them at the end of the last movie? Hey, shut up, and so suddenly this machine <laughs> goes nuts, and they all get stuck down in the quantum realm. Oh. Oh my God! Like they like they go into it. Oh, okay. So wait, what, what, what's what's Janet afraid Getting of down there? Time. All right, we'll see. She <laughs> met this guy Kang down there, and she helped him repair this ship of his. Okay. But when they have it all fixed up, and she touches the ship, it gives her all these visions of Kang conquering and murdering people. Kind of a weird feature for a ship to have. So then she decided <laughs> to mess up his ship's power core to make him stuck down there, and she's afraid he could get out. Also, why were they even messing with that stuff? I mean, she must have told them about Kang down there. Oh, well, no, she kept that to herself. Oh, she did? Yeah, in fact, she doesn't tell them until much later in the movie when they've been down there for a while. Really? Why? So the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. So anyway, they get separated down there, and Scott and Cassie get captured by some quantum people that live down there. Uh-oh. And so they go up to Scott, like, are you a spy? And Cassie's like, no, he's not a spy. He's my dad. So they're like, oh, okay. How does that prove anything? <laughs> Why couldn't they both be spies? Unclear. And so these folks are scared of Kang because he's been conquering everything, so Cassie He's like, Dad, we gotta stay and help these people. So then they find their family first? Yeah, but she wants to help because that's her one character trait, and so she gives her dad some crap about that. These could be cannibals or something. They don't know anything about them. Yeah, anyway, then they get attacked, so these people are like, hey, you led them right to us. Didn't they capture them and bring them there? They did, yeah, and then Scott and Cassie are gonna get attacked by Modoc. Oh, Modoc, huh? What's his deal? Ah, well, turns out he's Darren Cross. Hey. Who is that? Darren Cross. He was, you know, the generic bad guy from the first movie. He's from the first movie. Oh, yeah, okay. he is. So when he got sent down to the quantum realm at the end of the first movie, he got all messed up, and we're going to see his tiny little butt. What? And came <laughs> to this killing machine called Modoc. And what's he like? Well, his head's all stretched out weird oh. like this. Oh, my God. How did he do that? I've been doing Pilates. Oh, okay. So anyway, yeah. meanwhile, Janet, Hope, and Hank are trying to track down this guy that Janet used to know down in the quantum realm. Who's this guy? Well, his name is Cry. Are, and we're gonna find out they <laughs> had a little Bill romantic Murray. thing going when she used to live down there. <laughs> oh, quantum infidelity is tight. <laughs> and so this guy used to be a good guy, but now he's a bad guy. Oh no. Yeah, so they steal his ship and escape. Very exciting. And so then Scott is gonna meet Kang, and Kang is gonna be like, hey, help me retrieve my ship's core or I'll kill your daughter and make you relive it over and over. Oh wow. my god. So Scott's like, geez, okay, I'll do it. He doesn't like how that sounds. He doesn't know. <laughs> so then he is gonna do what Kang asked. Uh oh. And so then Scott's gonna turn into giant man and stomp around yelling our word is our bond kind of a strange strategy but yeah that might help <laughs> and cassie's also gonna help start an uprising with those quantum people from earlier in the movie all right i don't feel like i know those characters and i'm not super emotionally invested and this guy with a yellow beam thing for a head is gonna die oh no guy with a yellow beam thing for a head and cassie's also gonna have to fight modok and try to convince him to join their side well, it's gonna be hard to convince such a bad guy to help out actually it's gonna be super easy Barely. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, she's gonna be like, don't be a dick. And so, you know, <laughs> That's that works it? immediately. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. And then Hank shows up with some super evolved ants and they beat the crap out of Kang. Very violent insects. So then the good guys are gonna be going home through a portal, but then Kang's gonna pop out again and start beating the crap out of Scott. Oh, no. Yeah, and Hope's gonna pop back in to help out and the portal's gonna close behind her. Oh, yeah. 
of hope. I forgot she was in this. Me too, sir. So <laughs> then they managed to defeat Kang, and maybe he's dead. You know, maybe. Wow, so they're stuck in the quantum realm, huh? They sacrifice themselves? Ah, no, the portal can just reopen, so they go home. Oh. Okay, okay I, just, I thought there would be some consequences or something. I mean, it has consequences, sir. The guy with the yellow beam thing for a head died. <laughs> that is a good point. Yeah, you're right. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, I mean, Kang is supposed to be the next big bad guy, right? And so far, we've seen him get killed in Loki. And in this one, he gets beat up by a bunch of bugs. Yeah, well, there is going to be a post credit scene of a bunch of him in a bunch of different costumes. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That is threatening and not hilarious in any way. Great. I think people are really going to like this. Me too. I guess not. Mm. Wow, not the lowest rated. That's pretty bad. We're just not learning our lesson over there, are we? Nope. I'm not surprised it was the lowest rated. I mean, it barely got a reaction out of us, and these pitch meetings are usually funnier. Yeah, that's kind of a fair point. I pointed it out before, like, Ant-Man was never my favorite character. The whole Quantum Mania stuff, we discussed before, the rules are kind of wonky in the first place. But then, you're basically just doing an alternate universe thing, using the Quantum Realm as an excuse to have all these different things going on. Now, I can see why they're trying to build up Kang to be a bad guy, too. Because he is a, he's a classic Avengers enemy, if you look at the comics. But with the issues you've had with the, uh, the guy playing the character now, I forget what his name is, Jonathan Majors, I think. Okay. That's not gonna be the case anymore. So effectively, you built up this character who's eventually gonna go nowhere. I don't remember if it came out at this time, if it came out like right after this, that he was having some legal problems. Yeah, that, that's, that's why they got rid of his character because he was having legal issues and they, he, uh, they didn't want him part of the universe anymore. I think I remember what you're talking about. I just don't remember like the uh, the facts of the case. Okay. Yeah, because I know I know it was pretty recently that he actually got convicted for whatever it was, but I think the story came out quite around quite a while ago, probably around the time that this was out, and that probably killed the box office a little bit too. Okay. Too bad for him. Yeah. Doesn't take much to cancel people nowadays, and if you actually did something wrong to where you're having legal battles, then you can kiss that career goodbye. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. So. Disney will do a lot of stuff, but that's one thing they won't put up with. Yeah. Consequences for him in real life, but not on the screen. <laughs> and they pointed that out again. Of course there's no consequences. Yeah, he never dies. There's always another one. Or if, like somebody, if they do kill somebody, it's like somebody you're not going to miss. Right. What's your problem with cutting the cord on some of these characters? Let's go, man. No, Nothing lasts. I was going to say, you know, you got some older characters in here who could have a noble sacrifice or something for the younger generation, but nah, we'll just kill some random guy with a yellow head. A yellow bean for a head. Yeah. Whatever, I'm already over it. So. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to match Iron Man's death, but you got to have some consequences in this universe to make people you know, care what's happening. Yeah, especially if, if what you're trying to do is make way for a new generation, mm -hmm. you need to start saying goodbye to the older generation and make it so that whatever challenges that they're going to face, that it's going to be their problem and they can't fall back on other people to deal with. It's like, you're going to have to start learning from your own mistakes. Right. You're going to have to start making them and being prepared to deal with what comes after. Right. So This isn't a John claude Van Damme movie where you have an old master who's going to be there to teach you the ways of things. You need to figure things out on your own and become the heroes you're meant to be. Precisely. And I'm still waiting for them to do that, but they don't seem to ever go there. Yeah. You know, it's like, you could sacrifice uh, Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer's characters, but you don't do it. You could sacrifice Wasp or something, but you don't do it. Mm -hmm. You don't kill anybody. And that's the thing, without consequences, these are just generic action films. Yeah, then what's the point of watching them if nobody's ever going to die? There's no actual danger. Exactly. No drama, no uh, no money. So. Like, you didn't even, even Kang here, all you did was beat him up a little bit. <laughs> well, he said supposedly they kill him, but then they revealed at the end there's more of him, so it doesn't matter. If they want to bring him back, they can. They might just do it with a different person altogether. So. No, I think they're actually moving on altogether, but we'll see. All right. I guess we'll find out. Yep. Well, fam, I think that's going to do it for us. I think we get the point there. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, check us out on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Later, guys.